behind me is the Berlin Cathedral and I've already walked a long way to get myself up here and my feet are tired they're probably swollen and before I came on this trip I know that I was almost 50 pounds less fat total but there's a bulge in my shorts I could see him he does exist well me and my German soldier my really big German soldier are gonna show you around Berlin this is year one week 23 Berlin story starts back in the summer of 1989. Back behind me is the uh, zoological station for the German train system. But back then in 1989, I was actually standing in West Berlin. Yes, it was still East and West Germany back there. And my brother and I backed back through Europe for six and a half weeks and we flew into Frankfurt. And we decided to go ahead and take the train directly to Berlin and of course through East Germany and then into West Berlin and when we got here to West Berlin this was the main train station for West Berlin at the time and of course it was like a it was an overnight train it was like 16 or 18 hours on a train we didn't know that we actually had to also reserve seats so we ended up actually sleeping in the baggage car with a bunch of uh, other American backpackers and Back over here was actually a McDonald's. When we first got off the train, we were so hungry. We needed something to eat. And that actually ended up being a funny story because when we got off the train, we went and got something to eat. And when we threw away our trash, I was only 18 at the time and really didn't know anything. And then I read what the trash can said and it said Danka. And so for a lot of the trip, I actually thought Danka meant trash. So I thought people were calling me trash for a good portion of the trip before my brother said, no, dumbass, what do they say in America? And I said, uh, they say, thank you. He's like, yeah, dumbass. So also behind me is the Kaiser Wilhelm Church. It was a really beautiful church here in Berlin. And of course we bombed the shit out of it during World War II. And so you can see that back there. So, but yeah, that's where my Berlin story started was in West Berlin back in the day when the Berlin Wall was still up. So. We'll see you around Berlin. Well, behind me is the Kadeve, which is Berlin's big, nice department store. And when I first visited it back in 1989, yes, this is still what was West Berlin. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice department store. It's not like Harrods in London or anything at that distinguished, but it is very nice. So if you come to Berlin, Make sure you check this out. This is Berlin's Tier Garden, and it's basically Berlin's Central Park. It's a massive green space with trails and ponds and beautiful little sitting spaces and all that kind of shiza. So we're working our way up to the Victory Monument, so we'll see you there. The Victory Monument behind me was one of Berlin's first national monuments, or Germany's first national monuments, and it represents victory, that's why Victoria is on top of the monument, and it symbolizes Prussia, which really became Germany's victories and a bunch of wars, and so uh, that's why it's here, but the real fascinating part about this monument was that it was actually located over here by the Riksdag, which we'll eventually get to here soon. And the reason why it was actually moved from the Riksdag, which is like their parliament building, was because it was all part of Hister's master plan for 
the development of Berlin to become the world capital after World War II. And of course, we know that uh, that didn't turn out <laughs> that way. So it's actually pretty uh, remarkable that it was actually over there about, I don't know, about a mile. Uh, and it was constructed like in the late 1800s and then in the early 1900s and during Hitler's reign, they actually moved this whole monument and enlarged it. So we're gonna head up this way here to Brandenburg Gate and then eventually the Riksdag and all that kind of stuff. And for those of you who are keeping track, yes, this was still West Berlin when I first came here in 1989. So as we walk up the boulevard here toward Brandenburg Gate, uh, then we start to get toward where there was the wall, the dividing line between West and East Berlin. So we're gonna see that here soon. So we'll see you up by Brandenburg Gate. So we walked all the way up the June 17th Street Boulevard from the Victory Monument and now behind me is Brandenburg Gate and when I was here in 1989 where I was standing pretty much there was a wall <laughs> so now we'll actually be able to walk through it but before we walk through and get into another street which is under the linden which basically means under the linden trees uh, we're going to go check out a few other places. And as you can see, it looks like they're setting up for their Independence Day <laughs> Festival, June 17th. Behind me is the Riksdag, which is the German Parliament building. And back in the day, yeah, we bombed the shit out of it. And it, it laid in ruins for a good time. I think sometime in the 90s then, they actually decided to go ahead and rebuild and remodel it and everything else. So it's a beautiful structure and all that. So yeah, this is German parliament. <laughs> so we're back at Brandenburg Gate and again, back in 1989, right where I'm at, there was a wall and it's amazing. The bullshit that we put ourselves through and each other through. So. But yeah, now I'm walking through Brandenburg Gate and back in 1989 when it was East and West Germany and East and West Berlin, couldn't do that. So, but here we are now, walking now into, in 1989, basically what was then East Germany and East Berlin. So now we're no longer on the June 17th Boulevard. We're now on Unter den Linden, which I've already said, basically means under the linden trees. And you'll see why, but You'll also start to see the architecture change as we move under the linden trees. All right, well, let's just continue down under the linden here and see what we can find. As you can see, Brandenburg Gate is behind me and now we're going deeper into what was East Berlin, so. We'll see you under the linden trees. So as I walk down under the linden here, let me talk to you a little bit about my experience back in 1989. So actually I just crossed over Frederick Street. I think it's pronounced like Frederickstrasse or something like that and then down over that way was checkpoint charlie and that was the main gate from west berlin into where i am now walking deeper and deeper into east germany so it was a very interesting experience back in 1989 because you know you hear about east germany and communism and all of that back in the day but when we got off the train station back at the zoo station, I mean, it was like Vegas. I mean, you had malls and big bright lights and all of this kind of stuff. But then as soon as we passed into East Germany through Checkpoint Charlie back there on Frederick Street, I mean, it got nasty. I mean, it was gloomy. It was, it was just nasty. And so to actually 
walk down to under the linden here and see it in modern times is is absolutely amazing because they've got obviously it's built up they've got stores i mean starbucks is right back there and you're gonna see all kinds of sony stuff once we get up here so yeah i'm just crossing the street to get back into the center of the under the linden and not get run over by that bus right there but yeah, so now we're back under the linden trees and continue to walk down the boulevard here. But yeah, it was just a very interesting experience back in 1989. And plus, I was just a kid, so I was 18 years old. So, you know, it was just kind of like, bleh. So, yeah, so we're just going to keep walking down here. I can see there's a lot of construction down here. I think there was some big sony pavilion under construction the last time i was in berlin so we'll see what the under the linden brings see you in a bit well, we walked pretty far down under the linden boulevard and as you can see down there is brandenburg gate this is a statue right up here of king frederick the great and then you got Humboldt University, and we're going to continue to walk down Under de Linden. And you can see then the top of Berlin Cathedral, and you can see the big television antenna that's at Alexanderplatz. So we'll probably end up somewhere up there here today. Waiting for the bus to go, go by. Go, go, by, go, go, by. Waiting for the bus to go, go, by here in Berlin. <laughs> it's been a long walk. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to get something to drink because. Fundamentally, I am just a eighth grader in an old body, so uh, might as well get something to drink at Ballsack. Can't make this shit up. Oh, we stopped here at <laughs> Ballsack Coffee. I uh, actually got myself a, a green tea here and just taking a break from, from the walk because, again, I don't know how far I've walked. I'm going to guess it's been a good seven or eight miles uh, today already. But we've you've seen a lot. You've seen where my Berlin story started and back in 1989 at the zoo station and then walked through Tiergarten and through the Victory Monument and all the way up to June 17th Boulevard uh, to Brandenburg Gate and the Riechstag and then down to Unter den Linden and then here we are now up in really the center of Berlin where the Berlin Cathedral's at and then the big antenna which you're going to see here soon so now it's kind of just uh, walk around and enjoy the day so I'm going to enjoy my tea and enjoy the internet and, and the break here and then we'll, uh, we'll go see more of Berlin so see you in a bit. I well, just finished my rest, if you want to call it that, and now we're walking up toward the big television antenna, but I was talking to a nice young man. He's a senior in high school. They were from Ohio, and it was nice talking to him, and then mom and dad sat down, and it's interesting the behavior that people have and how it they change and stuff when... You know, all of a sudden, here was this nice, I would say he's 18 years old, he's in Berlin, Germany, and he was telling me that they're off to Munich tomorrow, I'm going through the pussy posse here, maybe you can see it behind me, and, but it's just funny how here's this 18 year old, he seems very excited about the trip, but then as soon as mom and dad sit down, then he just kind of clams up, and of course, dad looked at me like I was some kind of stalker or something but it just got me thinking about how interesting it is here and 
I, I understand we're in a foreign country. It's not Ohio or anything, but it's just interesting that how we change behavior by what's around us and all that kind of stuff. And in all reality, they should have just shipped the kid off to Germany by himself or with some friends. That would have been really cool. And of course, that's what mom and dad did with my brother and I shipped us off. I was 18 and Matt was 22. So eh, that's can't really say that <laughs> we were any more mature. So, but yeah, just got me thinking. But now we're coming up here onto the television antenna here in Berlin a middle city center basically is what it's called so this is what we're walking toward sometimes you just got to take a break and you just you just need it to just feel like home sometimes Some of you might recognize where I'm standing now. This is Alexander Plots. This is where they filmed that one scene in the Jason Bourne movie with Matt Damon. So yeah, this is where they filmed it. Uh, again, we're in now in the heart of what was East Germany back in 1989, but now it's just a really nice place with shops and they got some gelato festival going on over there, so. Yeah, it's just a really neat place. Well, I hope you en enjoyed our little walk around Berlin. And of course, what is a better way to end a tour of Berlin than to uh, stop here? And get another Lita beer and this is a Dunkel beer, a dark beer and I'm actually at the Hofbrau München which is Hofbrau Munich so if you go back and you look at my week 5 blog you'll actually see that I was at the original Hofbrau house uh, in Munich uh, there so thanks for joining me in my trip around Berlin and I will see you in week 24